I'm looking for someone. We're all looking for someone. Who are we looking for? I'm searching, always searching for someone. Who's that special someone? I know and I don't know. I know, I know he's there. I know, I know I would recognize him when I am him. I know that he can make sense of things that I cannot understand. But I don't know, I don't have any words to describe him. I don't know what he feels like. I don't know what he wants. And so how am I going to find him? How am I going to get closer to something that I cannot define? Not through thinking, but by becoming. If I become him, I'll know him. That's the only way. The one I'm looking for is not someone I can know, it's someone I can be. When I'll be him, I'll know him. I'll know what he wants. I'll know what he feels like. But even now, even though I don't know what he wants, I don't ever want to violate his desires. I know very well that I don't want to do what he doesn't want me to do. I don't know what that is. Because if I do what he doesn't want me to do, it will take me a little longer to find him. It will take me longer to become him. And so even though I don't know who he is, I'm always guessing who he is. I'm always trying to get closer and closer to guessing what he really wants, because if I guess right, I win everything. And he responds to every guess. If I really tune in, I can know after every guess if I got closer to him or further away. This is not always clear. And sometimes it's in the complete opposite direction of where we imagine. And yet, this is the only guidance we truly have. Because any external guidance still needs context and interpretation, and therefore, it cannot direct us towards this one that we're looking for. This one we're not looking for with information. Information is simply to know how not to offend him. But how we look for him <coughs> is by returning to our essence.
the one I'm looking for. is even more busy looking for me. I'm his pathway into this world. He loves this world. He really wants to be here. I'm in his way. And so as I search, I become, as I become, he has more of what's rightfully his. I was making so much noise that he couldn't even say the important things that he had to say. I thought I was searching for him, but I was searching in a way that didn't lead to him. And so that noise is what stands between the one that I'm searching for and the reality that belongs to him. This searching is happening whether we're aware of it or not. The life force is always searching for us. Searching for us meaning that it wants to translate the innate intelligence into letters and words so that you can understand. So you're searching from the conscious side and it is searching from the unconscious side. And this someone is the closest than all things to us. And this someone is someone that can solve all, all our problems. Not only can he solve all our problems, he will make us realize that there never really was a problem. It's only a problem if this someone decides to put pressure on his nerves because of whatever the event might have been. If this someone doesn't decide to put pressure on the nerves, then there's no pressure. No pressure, no problem. And so this someone that's unconscious, that we're looking for, through his perspective, that results in what we see and interpret gets to decide how our life feels. If we find this someone, then our life becomes aligned. The parts that we are in charge of, the conscious mind, no longer causes obstacles to the life force. There's a unification. This unification is the experience of finding the one, finding the one you're looking for. You find when you become, you become only what you already are. Every becoming in awareness 
is simply a realization of what already is. And so the solution to all our problems is closer to us than our problems themselves. And yet, as long as we haven't found spiritually the entrance to ourselves, all the problems are still problems. They are problems because we biologically process them as problems. And then there is a problem. The problem is the resulting biology. And so, because of our nature, because of how the spiritual becomes physical in us, and the physical becomes spiritual, everything that we experience becomes who we are, becomes our future. And to allow the one to return means to allow our entire physical structure to be cleansed from any form of resistance to who we really are. Any form of resistance that we have to a human being means that that energy is working against us. A human being is quite a complex being. The body, the shape of the body, the different activities, this is not something that someone who lives in today's society would rather love, but this is within our nature to love. This is something that comes from a place that is deeper than the body itself. The one who loves this body is beyond this body. He made it because he loves it exactly this way. And we are in a different place altogether. We're concerned with different things altogether. We don't realize the detail. We don't realize the complexity. We don't realize the genius that was invested in making us a very specific way. Every single part of us needs to love this way, the way that we were made. Every detail about how we were made. Any part of us that doesn't get along with that way is an obstacle to reality. It's a spirit that's turned against the reality that it is. It's forgotten itself. We don't exist as other forms. We exist as this form. This is the form that was chosen way beyond anything that we ever encountered consciously way beyond anything we've ever even imagined.
anything we know how to imagine, anything that can be explained to us in words. And so to become the one is to unite with the intention and the desire that created you. Otherwise, you're not you. You're someone else. Every part of you that doesn't love all of you is not you. It's someone else. It's not the echad. It's the acher. It's missing a little piece at the end of the reish that makes it a dalit. And the acher, the other in you, is a lie, it doesn't exist. The other in you is a cover to something that caused a negative emotion to cover the truth of reality. That's where the other comes from. The angry one doesn't like himself and therefore he is another, even inside himself. The true owner loves himself. That's the nature of the owner. If you want to know when a spirit comes to you, if it's relating to the owner or to the other side, ask it, do you love humanity? And you can see based on what it's trying to tell you or what it's trying to do, you can tell if it loves reality or not if it loves humanity or not, if it loves you, your family. What does it want to say? What does it want to do? Where is it coming from? And so this way, the more we cleanse ourselves from the other, the more we're preparing ourselves for the one. The one is the one I'm looking for, the one we're all looking for. The one is the one who lives in all worlds. The one who is allowing us to participate in his life force. The one who knows how our body works. The one who knows how a soul can be attached to a body. That's the one I'm looking for because that's the one I am. I did it, I'm here. I just don't know myself. So in this way, I come closer to the one that I'm searching for. The closer I come, the more he becomes. The more he becomes, the more he knows. The more he knows, the closer I come. And it keeps going. search for the one, we're uniting 
with the one. We're uniting through the search. Through the search that we're searching for him and he's searching for us. In that search, we're together. Even if we don't yet know each other. Even if we're not one yet. But you, we're uniting by searching together. If we are distracted, then he's still searching for us, but he's seeing our back. It's not face to face. The search is not happening face to face. <laughs>